Though many know the basic story of Matthew Hopkins or the Witchfinder General, the whole truth is far stranger. Hopkins left a bloody mark across Essex and Suffolk from 1645 to 1647, when he and his followers declared war against witchcraft for a price. Britain at this point was a terrifying place where the devil was real and the country was in upheaval from civil war. Apocalyptic rumours were common. A woman in Lancashire was said to have given birth to a headless baby. The devil was seen in the sky and the body of a supposedly profane man was dug up and eaten by dogs. Hopkins began his journey in Manningtree, eventually overseeing the arrest of more than 300 men and women and the hanging of over a 100. They were kept here in Colchester Castle, by then converted into a prison, while awaiting trial. One of the first to be accused was Elizabeth Clark. She was typical of those singled out, an old woman who often resorted to begging from her neighbours, an outcast. Hopkins' female helpers found a number of markings on Clark's body and declared them to be teats for her demon familiars to suckle from. While Hopkins and his assistants interrogated her in her cottage, Clark confessed the devil lay with her and had given her imps to do her bidding, and that they were due back any moment. The room was no doubt tense when she began to call several strange names. One by one animals began to appear, such as Holt, a creature described as like a cat but smaller, or Vinegar Tom, like a greyhound with legs as long as a stag. Hopkins and his assistants were given money for every witch convicted, and eventually people resented paying. In order to keep momentum, Hopkins had to convince everyone the work was necessary and that the devil did live among us. This is Betty Potter's dip close to the busy road that leads from Boxted to Colchester. This was once the site of uh, Boxted's one and only recorded witch trial. Boxted entered the tale thanks to Elizabeth Potter, known always as Betty in local folklore. Accounts agree that she lived in a cottage along the Boxted Straight Road, that road which leads from the heart of Roman Colchester, almost due north through the villages of Myland, eventually to Boxted Cross. Contemporary accounts also point to her having been responsible for the curing of the daughter of a local merchant, with some retellings claiming that Betty was richly rewarded for her efforts. Her demise seems to have come about as a result of an incident in which it is claimed she bewitched a team of horses, pulling a wagon of wheat from Rivers Hall. Records show that she was hung by a mob led by the son of the squire of Rivers Hall on October the 21st. While the truth of events are perhaps lost to history, it appears that Hopkins had been on his way to Boxted to try Betty Potter himself. Upon his arrival, Hopkins quickly acted to claim Betty Potter's body, and this is where the strangest part of the tale begins. Once Hopkins arrived, he took possession of the body and claimed that upon trying to do so, the body descended from its noose and disappeared, leaving behind only its clothes. Most educated locals dismiss both Hopkins' account and the supposed reasons for her execution, believing it more likely that her death was a result of her Catholic beliefs. However, many people in Boxted and nearby villages hold that Betty Potter haunts the wooded dip in the road where she was hung. And there are those yet living who claim to have sighted the spirit of Betty Potter swinging from that tree. Most troublingly, the accepted version of the story does little to explain why Betty was dragged to be hung in the dead of night when Hopkins was soon to arrive. Why was Hopkins so eager to acquire her body, and why put about a story of her body's disappearance? What happened to Betty's body, and why is it that across the border in Suffolk it is claimed that Hopkins himself is also unquiet in his grave? What happened to Hopkins is as mysterious as any of his stories. Some say he died peacefully, and others say he too was hanged as a witch. All we can be certain of is that his murderous legacy lives on.